Hi, my name is Eric Raum, and I'm a streams technical services biologist that help people diagnose stream and watershed issues in the northwest and southwest parts of the state. Today I'm going to be talking about some of the alterations in the state of Missouri to our streams focused primarily on the, grade, the alteration of the gradient or the energy component. And I'm going to use some video clips of stream tables to do that. Hopefully by this point you have already watched most of our Understanding Streams videos in this series and have seen things such as what is a watershed, portions of a watershed, primary components, and alterations to streams. The first stream alteration that we're going to talk about is changing the gradient by channelizing a stream. Channelization means straightening the stream, taking out all of the bends or the curves or the meanders and making one long straight path for the water to flow. This is typically done for agricultural purposes or flood protection to either move water away from an area very quickly or to concentrate flow in the stream channel trying to reduce or prevent flood waters from getting out onto the floodplain. To understand stream gradient you have to think about the change in elevation over a certain amount of distance. This constitutes the stream's energy through a reach. In this particular example, we have a change in elevation of 30 feet over a 10 mile float, as we see our canoeist go here. That's a three foot per mile gradient. This is an unaltered stream. We're now going to Channelize this stream, altering its gradient. We still have the same change in elevation. However, the length of our stream is going to be shorter as we have heavy machinery come in, cut a new path shown here, reducing the distance of these curves. Our floaters now are going to move much faster through the reach of river because our total length is cut in half to five miles, increasing our gradient or the energy component significantly. We were at a three foot per mile gradient and we are now at a six foot per mile gradient. This allows the channel and the water in the channel to have much more energy to erode material such as the stream banks and the stream bed. If we look at the energy profile of a stream with this profile line, the channelized reach is much steeper than the areas upstream and downstream of that reach. This significant increase in energy creates a waterfall effect and you see that that then erodes material going in an upstream direction and we call that upstream erosion a head cut. Here is an example of how impactful head cuts can be on the stream bed. This picture shows the water pouring over what looks like solid rock. However, in this particular stream system, this is all different types of sediment that is easily erodible during high water events. At each time a, a new round of high water comes down this channel and pours over this lip, this head cut will continue to erode in an upstream direction, eroding both the stream bed and causing the stream banks to destabilize and collapse. Head cuts will move upstream until they hit something hard, like a road or a box culvert. They will also move out onto the floodplain in any place that water concentrates and pours over the edge of the stream bank. Both the stream beds and the stream banks become eroded and destabilized and collapse into the stream channel. This is an example of head cuts from channelization moving upstream in Iowa. For scale, this is a full-size car. Head cuts can be all different sizes. Here's a head cut moving up a high flow channel along a stream. Head cuts like this along roadsides in ditches or on the floodplain are often called gullies. Even head cuts that are small 
only a few inches high, like this one, contribute erosion and sediment into the stream channel. Head cuts aren't always just in the form of little waterfalls. Sometimes they are riffles that are shallow and spaced close together, like we can see along this ditch. So our head cuts move in an upstream direction, eroding the stream bed and causing the stream banks to collapse, releasing a tremendous amount of sediment that rapidly moves through the channelized reach because of the increased gradient and energy and hits the downstream portion of the channel, which is at a lower slope or, or gradient and less energy, depositing all that material. Ultimately, the stream is trying to regain its dynamic equilibrium and regain its natural stream gradient. All of that mobilized stream bed and stream bank material, including both sediment and any of the wood or other debris that is along each channel corridor, enters the stream channel, moves through the channelized reach rapidly, and then piles up in that lower gradient, lower energy area downstream of the channelized reach. This area in this picture is a stream channel completely filled with debris in, in what we refer to as a log jam. In this area where all this material is stacked up, water has to find a way to continue to push water and sediment through here using the energy it has available. Sometimes that forces water out onto the floodplain more frequently or even causes the channel to cut new paths across the floodplain. We are now going to use a stream table demonstration to show all of the different effects talked about from channelization. Thinking about the primary components and how we alter the energy component, the water component, the sediment component, and in this particular case, we don't have vegetation, but assuming that the vegetation is uh, eroding and falling into the stream as we lose stream bank in different areas. So I will start this video. And you will see that this is an unaltered stream. It has all of its meanders and it is in dynamic equilibrium even without vegetation. We plug the old channel and we straighten across a meander, reducing the stream's length and increasing the stream gradient through that reach. As we speed up the flow of water, we can start to see our stream banks upstream collapsing, the stream meandering further and further we also see gravel bars forming on the point bar side as the outside bends erode, gravel is deposited. The stream channel bed is getting deeper. We can see that through these darker shadows. Downstream of the channelized reach, we have a very wide channel because we have more and more sediment dropping out and the channel and the water is working to find the path of least resistance. It is spreading out, dropping out material because it is slowing down and losing its energy, and it's widening the channel because it's easier to erode the stream banks in some cases than move across that log jam or debris that's plugged the channel. That channel continues to get wider and wider. Our channelized reach is no longer straight like it had been previously. It is trying to manage the energy coming through here since it's accelerated and now is adding length by eroding back through the, the floodplain and in this particular case trying to recapture the length that was lost out here through our channel plug and our straightened reach of river. We're also eroding down as we get deeper and deeper with our channel exposing these areas here where water had been flowing before that uh, uh, stream bed was uh, eroded away through the head cutting. And this process will continue to erode material upstream and deposit material downstream and trying to regain the length that was lost to get back into that dynamic equilibrium. The next 
type of alteration that we're going to talk about is improper in-stream pit mining. This is for either sand or gravel, where an excavator comes into the channel and digs into the stream bed, creating a pit. Oftentimes these are very large in size. As you will notice, the gradient on the upstream edge of the, the pit is very similar to that increased gradient through channelization. And, it, and the resulting effect is the same. Head cuts start to erode the stream bed in an upstream direction. Eroding material from the stream bed and causing the stream banks to collapse. And all of that material, that sediment, ends up back in the pit available for a gravel mining operation to continue to excavate material, opening up the pit again and again and again, sending more and more head cuts upstream. Here is a stream table video demonstrating in-stream pit mining, where material will be excavated from the stream channel, creating a head cut that moves upstream. And that head cut is eroding the stream bed and causing the stream banks to collapse, refilling the pit. And if the pit is excavated, it will continue to send head cuts upstream every time that it is excavated. This stream table demonstration will show head cuts moving upstream along each tributary, deepening the channel by eroding the stream bed, making stream banks less stable, collapsing down, moving more sediment downstream, causing the downstream part of the channel to widen. So as we can see here, the channel on the downstream section is widening as more and more sediment and water is moved into that lower reach. Our stream channel has gotten deeper and deeper, exposing areas that had been inundated as the channel gets deeper because the head cuts continually move upstream. Our stream banks are also weakening upstream, collapsing down, contributing more sediment into the channel and depositing on the downstream reaches, causing more widening and more sediment to enter the system. This stream table demonstration will show how head cuts moving upstream also impact surface water connection to things like ponds and wetlands out on the floodplain. As the head cuts move upstream, they erode the stream bed elevation, lowering the water surface in the stream channel, making a deeper channel. That lowered water is connected directly to groundwater and to surface water such as ponds and wetlands. As that elevation lowers in the stream channel, the water on the floodplain will also drop. So we'll see in this video what happens to this pond as the head cuts move through. we can see the pond has gotten drier and this can have long-term effects to things like our wetlands 
in our native plant communities that depended on that surface water connection to groundwater. This concludes the stream table demonstrations of gradient alterations of streams in Missouri. If you have any questions, please contact the Missouri Stream Team Program and be sure to catch the best management practices video in our Understanding Streams video series. Thank you.